Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, Pastor Julian here. Uh, welcome to OB1. If you're new with us, uh, happy Sunday. Uh, today we're continuing our message series. Uh, we're going through a few chapters of the book of Psalms. Uh, we call it uh, Summer in the Psalms. And, and the Psalms are a collection of songs, uh, poems. And, but I, I think uh, the, the important thing for us as we're reading a psalm, as we're uh, going through it, is it's not only going through a poem or going through a song. It's really encountering God, encountering his uh, person, uh, the identity of God, finding the identity of God, finding also our identity in him, in his eyes. And so again, we're not going through uh, words, we're not just going through music here, we're really finding God, his promises, who we are, and who he is. And that's why the cool thing about the Psalms is that we see a lot of honesty. You know, there's a lot of like uh, honest prayers and honest feelings. Why? Because it's an honest book, you know. You, we can be honest with God. We don't have to fake it. And so as you read it, you're going to see like really like emotions from King David and Asaph. They're like when they're mad, when they're angry, and how honest and vulnerable they are to God. As an example for us that we can also be honest and vulnerable to God. And so today we're going to be going through Psalm 103. Uh, that it's, uh, it's becoming a very special psalm in my heart. Uh, as I was going through it. I'm falling in love with it more and more. There's so many uh, good pieces here. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to read and, and talk about. This Psalm 103 is a psalm of gratitude. It is a psalm of thanksgiving. I believe what God is reminding us and teaching us through the psalm is how to have a heart that is grateful to God. How to have an attitude of gratitude and an attitude of thanksgiving, not just uh, one day, not just during Thanksgiving week, but having an attitude of thanksgiving throughout our lives. And that's what I believe is the main theme of the Psalm 103. And so let's read it together. I'm going to read little sections and then we're going to talk about it. And so we're going to start with verse 1. It says the following. Uh, praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Pay attention here because it's talking about my soul and my inner being. Uh, I feel like uh, what God is inviting us here in the beginning of this psalm is to, uh, you know, connect to him with all our souls. Connect with him with our inmost being. Really connect with God. And why am I saying this? Uh, if we're honest, uh, one of the things that can happen little by little and it's gradual, our relationship with God can become a little stale. Our relationship with God, uh, you know, we're going through the motions, we, we come to church and we sing songs. But he's like, man, if you want to have an attitude of thanksgiving, you know, praise the Lord with your soul. Praise God with your inmost being. Connect with him. Really, what the Lord is inviting us uh, to do is really to refresh our relationship with him. To rekindle the fire of our love for him. To make uh, almost like things new. And so... I'm inviting you in this journey, especially after COVID and social distancing now, uh, to close your eyes again when you are worshiping God so that you are you're connecting with him. To go back to praying to God like you used to pray and talk to God before. Rekindle your relationship with the Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same, you know, your inmost being connecting it's almost like your heart connecting with the heart of God and I remember when I started coming to church you know man I was on fire with God and I I most of you is the same way you know when God 
uh, does the miracle of, of opening our eyes. It's something amazing that happens. And I remember meeting some of the people that were in church for like 15 and 20 years or five years. I remember they were like, you know, they're almost going through the motion. And I'm like on fire. And, and to be honest with you, uh, that, that can happen to all of us. And so if we allow it, our relationship with God becomes normal. It becomes uh, going to church is mundane. And what God is saying, no, it's my son, my daughter. You know, love me and praise me and worship me with your soul, with your heart. Do that again. I want to connect heart to heart with you, my son and my daughter. And so I hope. As God was talking to me in preparation for this message, I hope the Lord is also talking to you. Let's rekindle our relationship with God. Let's go heart to heart, soul to soul, and connect him with our inmost being. Now, uh, verse 2, again, continues with the theme of thanksgiving and gratitude. It says, praise the Lord my soul. Here it is again. Here it is. Thank God. Thank, praise him. How? How are we going to do it? Now he's... He's starting to teach us how to do it. How? Forget not of all of his benefits. What well, he's telling us, and, and he does the same thing in verse 12 of the same psalm. He's saying the, the same concept. He's saying, as far as the east is from the west. Sorry, uh, no, I have to go back. I'm sorry. Verse 2. Can we, we put verse, verse 2 again? Uh, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not, forget not all of his benefits. How are we going to have an attitude of thanksgiving? How are we going to have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God? He's saying, don't forget all of your blessings. Don't forget everything I've done for you, my son and my daughter. Don't forget the times that I comforted you. Don't forget the times I provided for you. Don't forget everything I've done in your life. And so, you know, something that we all do, and we do by accident, is like uh, stuff that happened to us in the past, sometimes we allow it to stay in the past. But God is saying, no, no, don't forget those blessings. Don't forget them. Don't forget all of God's benefits. What God is inviting us, he's inviting us to do something, to uh, get the past blessings that happen in our, life, in our lives to be a part of our present and ongoing thanksgiving to God. Don't forget all of his blessings. Don't forget all of his benefits. So how are we going to have an attitude of thanksgiving and a heart of gratitude? We're going to go and we're going to, as we remember the times that the Lord blessed us, we're just going to praise him for that. We're just going to thank him. And not only our blessings. Maybe it's, it was your family member. Maybe it's a, fa a, a friend. Maybe it's someone in the church that was blessed. And, and you remember when that happened to him, when that happened to her. He's just saying, as you remember all uh, the blessings that God provided, we're going to have a heart of thanksgiving. And so here he's teaching us, son, daughter, I want to connect heart to heart with you again, with your inmost being. I really want to connect that way. And how is it? it's, it's all going to start, forget not of all of the times that the Lord has blessed you and has blessed me. And then he's, he's starting to remind us of all of these blessings that we have received in the past. And he starts by verse 3. We're just going along. And he says, hey, remember that I am the God. I am the Lord who forgives of all of your sins. And in verse 12, it says the same thing. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. So he's saying, man, if you want to have a, a heart of gratitude and, and an attitude of thanksgiving, uh, you know, don't forget all the blessings. And let me remind you that I am a Lord who forgives. I forgive you. And I forgave you. The Lord, if you're listening to this, maybe for the first time, the Lord forgives you in 
Christ Jesus. And, and his forgiveness, you see, like, I, it's, it's so perfect. His forgiveness is so perfect that Hebrews 8.12 says the following. I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. So God, God's forgiveness is so perfect, it's so real, that even if we come to God today, after receiving his forgiveness in Christ, we come to God and we say, God, remember when I did that when I was nine and I did this wrong thing when I was 12 and I did the, that wrong thing? He's like, no, I, I don't really. Your transgressions I will remember no more. What he means is now I will never use those against you. I am the Lord who forgives. I, I hope you're now finding God's identity, not only his goodness, but also his identity. He's like, son, daughter, I want to reconnect with you heart to heart. I am a God that I, I bless you so much. I am a God that I, I, when I saw your sins and your mistakes, I didn't show up to come and condemn you. I came to you to save you, to forgive you, to adopt you, to embrace you, to have a heart of thanksgiving and an attitude of, of gratitude. We, ha we have to remember that when the Lord saw us with all our mistakes and all our sins, he says, you know what? I want to forgive you. And when we see that, uh, I hope you're seeing the person of God. That he is a God that doesn't come to condemn sinners like you and I. But he is a God who wants to forgive, invite, adopt, and help imperfect people like you and I. And so as we continue uh, reading, he's going to remind us also of, of another um, you know, section of blessings that is the following. In verse 3b, he says the following, And I am also, I want to remind you that I'm also the God who heals all your diseases. Uh, what he's saying here is like, I am a God who heals your pain. I am a God, sometimes you're going to have physical pain. And he's saying, would you celebrate the pain, the physical pain that you used to have and you don't have it anymore? Would you celebrate that? Would you not forget that? Maybe you had knee pain in the past, back pain in the past. Maybe you had foot pain, I don't know, maybe you had headaches all the time, but right now, as you're walking with God in your journey of life, right now you can look back and say, man, I don't have that anymore. I, I, I can tell you guys, I had, uh, which is known as surfer's low back pain, a lot of surfers have uh, the low back, it's probably because of paddling, you know, like we're like in this uncomfortable position, and I had a uh, low back pain for like a decade. And let me tell you, uh, I don't know when it happened even. Uh, my low back pain is not here anymore. It's gone. And, and I, was, I was confronted by God, not in a bad way, in a good way. Like, man, I don't think I stop and thank God until this moment uh, for my low back pain that, was, that bothered me for a decade not being here anymore. The Lord healed my low back. And, and not only physical pain he, he heals. The Lord also heals the, the emotional pain, the pain of our hearts. Uh, not, every, not every healing happens instantaneously. Some healing does happen instantaneously. And I, at the end of the message today, I want to pray for you and any pain that you may be having because the Lord can heal those. Uh, but some, uh, some uh, healing happens gradually. It's the Lord who decides the difference. But it, he is the Lord who heals. Would you, would you celebrate all the healings that have happened in your body? And there's also emotional healings. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, I, I was hurt by people when I came to God. And I was hurt by relationships. And uh, I, I had a lot of, like... Uh, a hard time connecting with people because, man, emotionally I couldn't trust 
people anymore. And little by little when I came and I started my journey with the Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ and he showed me the people in the church and he helped me to forgive people that, uh, that wronged me. Little by little I could trust again and the Lord is the one who healed my heart and maybe healed your heart of so many things. There's physical healing, there's emotional healing and there's also the healing of the mind that is this perspective. The, the healing of, of like a worldview, like I'll give you my example, like I didn't believe in marriage when I, when I came to God. And so I was so in so much pain, you know, my parents got divorced, everyone was divorced, all my friends were cheating, their girlfriends and wives were cheating and they were cheating. I'm like, why? Why get married? And so see, there was so much pain because of the pain, my worldview was like marriage doesn't exist anymore. Marriage is a thing of the past, and, and I'm here just to brag on God. He gets all the credit. Next month, uh, my wife and I will be celebrating 20 years of our wedding anniversary, and he gets all the credit. He really does get all the credit. Why? Because he is a God who heals he can heal your body, he can heal your soul, he can heal your heart, and can, he can heal your mind, your perspective, and your worldview, or anything that you need. What is something that you need healing in this moment? Is it a body? Is it heart? Is it mind? Uh, just start putting in the hands of God, and at the end of this message, I will uh, be praying with you. And feel free to even send me an email. I'd love to be a part of your journey because he is a God who heals. So, hey, God is, I hope you're seeing the big picture. Little by little, God's saying, man, I want to connect with you heart to heart again. My son, my daughter, I love you. I Don't forget all of my blessings. Don't forget everything I've done for you if you want to have a heart of thanksgiving. And now, don't you ever forget, please, my son and my daughter, that when I saw you and all your sins and all your mistakes, I didn't come to, you know, to judge you and to come against you. I came to save you and I gave you Jesus and the cross and the forgiveness. Why? Because I want a relationship with you. I hope you see the difference here. He's not a God who condemns, but he is a God who saves. Forget, forget not of all of his blessings. And so as we continue reading here, now we get to verse 4. He's continuing to remind us of all of his blessings. And so he says the following. I am also the one who redeems your life from the pit. I am the one that can get you out of the pit and because I care for your life and I can redeem you out of the pit. Whatever is your pit, we all have different pits and, and maybe it's the, the pit of loneliness. Maybe it is the pit of lack of peace, or lack of purpose. Maybe it is a pit of addiction. Maybe it's the pit of hopelessness. Hey, when I came to God, I had a few addictions. I, 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 if I can be honest and vulnerable, and, you know, like a single man going to college, I, I gave my life to God when I was 24. I was, I was addicted to drugs. Uh, I'm, I don't know if you can say that someone's addicted to pot and smoking pot, but I would smoke every day, many times a day. And uh, I had my addiction with uh, porn, you know, uh, what is an addiction? I, 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 you know, if you see it every day, is that an addiction? Probably. And so if I want to be honest and vulnerable with you, I had my pits, uh, you know. And so uh, God is the one who redeems, is me, meaning that he, he goes into the pit. He jumps into the pit and he comes and he rescues us and he saves us and he brings us out of the pit and he can even save and rescue us and redeem us from pits that we don't think will be ever possible sometimes we think like man this is my fate this is gonna be my journey I'm gonna have this struggle forever I will not find victory against this darkness but he's saying no no, no. 
hey, continue to walk with me, continue this journey with me, continue to connect with me heart to heart, continue to do your part, continue coming to church, continue to, to serve me as you serve others in the church and as you serve others outside of, continue in your journey, I will save you and rescue you and redeem you from your pit. As always, it doesn't, sometimes, it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it can happen overnight, but many times it's, it is a journey. Uh, I, was, I was talking to someone this week, and he was telling me that, that he struggled with uh, suicidal thoughts for a big chunk of his life. And he was pretty much, uh, you know, like he, had, he was like thinking that he was going to have that struggle for the rest of his life, and that was going to be his fate. And that was going to be his journey. I will have this struggle for the rest of my life. And he was saying that one day he had a breakthrough. And the breakthrough was simple, but it was powerful. And he was saying that almost overnight he was able to not have suicidal thoughts as, a, as an option for him anymore. Something that thought that would be impossible. But God is the one who redeems our lives from the pit. What is your pit? What do you need redeeming from? Maybe it's low self-esteem. Maybe it's greed. Maybe it's envy. Maybe it's you're never satisfied. It, just, it, it, it all starts with being honest and being real with yourself and bringing that pit to God and just saying, God, this is a reality for me in my life. I love you, but I don't know what it is. I'm never happy. Father, I, I, I love you, but I'm never satisfied. Father, I love you, but I'm always envious. So what is he saying, my son, my daughter? I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to celebrate all the pits that I have removed you from, but I also want to keep on bringing any challenges that you go through because I am a God. So what is your pit that you would like to just bring it to God, confess it to him, and just be honest and vulnerable? Because he's saying, I can redeem whatever is impossible to you, whatever is impossible to man, whatever is impossible to even technology and science, whatever is impossible, it's not impossible to God. And so just bring it to him because he's a God who redeems our life from the pit. And then uh, he continues in verse 4, uh, the second part of the verse. He says the following, And I am the God who crowns you with love and compassion. In Psalm 103, love and compassion are, meant, uh, are mentioned a few times. And so let's read all of them, and then we're going to talk about this one thing, that God is a God of love, and he is a God of compassion. So let's read it. In verse 11, it says the following. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, the skies, as the skies are up there, up there, so great is his love for those who fear him. I hope you see a couple of things in this passage that his love is gigantic for you. He's saying it's bigger. He, he's looking at us and he's going like, do you see the cloud? Do you see the, that cloud over there, my son, my daughter? Yeah, I see that cloud. It's bigger than that. Hey, do you see that star? It's bigger than that. Because as high as the skies are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. The second thing in this passage that I want you to pay attention, it has a condition right here. We'll be talking about this condition at the end. It says that this is for those who fear him. And now the second verse that talks about compassion is verse 13. It says, as the father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Now, we just heard that he's a God of love. We just read that he's a God of love. And now he's a God of compassion. That just as a father, as a parent, has compassion over their child, the Lord Almighty also has compassion over 
you and for you. Now, let's break it up and talk about his love and compassion. He is a loving God and he is a compassionate God. You know, we just read, he's saying, it's bigger than the clouds. It's bigger than the stars, my love for you. Yes, you, 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 you. Yeah, not the person that's on the other computer listening. You, right there, you. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the best comparison I have is when my daughter comes to me and she says, Dad, I love you. And I always say to her, I love you more. And then she goes like, oh, no way, Dad. I, I think I love you more. And I tell her every time, I'm like, daughter, one day when you have a child, you're going to know how the love of the parent, the love of the father, the love of the mother is so much greater than the love of the child for the father and for the mother. And so what God is teaching us, man, if you get all your guys' love, all you guys, how much all of the church in the whole world, how much people in the church love me, I still love love you more because my love for you is greater than the skies and then that's God's love for us much 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 greater than all of our loves combined for him and he is a God of compassion uh, why God is a God of compassion why he has compassion for us let's read verses 14 through 16 in Psalm 103 and see what it says it says, why God has compassion uh, for us? For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone. And its place remembers it. No more. Why God has compassion over his people? Why? Because he knows how we are formed, we just read. That he knows we're made out of imperfection after Adam and Eve. We're made out of imperfection out of Adam and Eve. And he knows that we are dust, that even when we're trying to be perfect, we can't achieve perfect perfect even when we're trying our best and we are fragile like flowers and a gardener it's a pretty much a gardening language here a gardener knows that this one flower won't last a year but the gardener still cares for that flower and so that's what God is saying to us I care for you just like a gardener cares for the flowers. I see a little bit of a humility part in this, in, this, in this text right now, that it's reminding us that we're like flowers, we're like dust, that we're so mortal, that we're so human. It's almost like God is trying to tell us, you know what, no matter how, how important you are and how much money you have or how famous you are, you're just a human being. Uh, you're not God. I am God. And no matter how successful and, or maybe how successful you be in the future, can you continue to have a humble attitude of someone that is imperfect, of someone that came from dust, that is going back to dust, and someone that is in my eyes just like a flower. I love and I care. And I will, I will give everything for that flower. But in reality, uh, it's, it's, it's life goes by so fast. God is a God of love. And God is a God of compassion. But let's talk about the little caveat that were in those verses. What was the caveat? Let's read that verse again. Verse 13. Uh, 13. It, it Two verses ended with this ending right here. This promise right here. I am the God of compassion. I am the God of love to those who fear him. Who fear 
God. I hope you see here that a lot of the promises in the Bible, they're not for everyone. Uh, in, in seminary, in Bible school, the professors, they divide this. The scholars, they divide the common grace of God, the common love that is for everyone, and the special love and the special grace of God that is just for those that really have a relationship with Him and really surrendered their lives to Him and made God their Father. Uh, common grace is like everyone's born, there's a sunshine for everyone, you plant a seed and that grows, that's common grace. When it rains, it rains on everyone. But special grace, the special grace of salvation, the special grace of forgiveness, the special grace of knowing that God is for us and He's not against us, that is not for everyone. It's available to everyone. But the recipients of those blessings are those who came to God through the Lord Jesus. I think my best comparison is the following. I love my nephews and my nieces, but I love my kids way more. I give, I give things to my kids that I don't give to my nephews and nieces. I love my nephews and nieces, don't get me wrong, but let's be honest. Uh, you know, it's my kid, it's my child. I, I, I provide for them food, shelter, uh, clothing. I don't, I don't give all of that to my nephew and niece. So God create, he loves every creature, everything he created, he loves. But there's something special that happens and we become recipients of his special grace, special love as we come to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is my invitation to you. If you've been walking with Jesus for all your life, Jesus is inviting us, you know, to go back and rekindle that relationship with him. Reconnect your heart with his heart so that you can have a heart of thanksgiving. Don't forget all the blessings. Remember that he's the one who forgave you. He's the one who adopted you. He's the one that brought you out of many pits and maybe still helping you out of some other pits. He's the one that is full of love and compassion for you. He knows all your imperfections and he loves you anyways. As far as, as, uh, as the east is from the west is how far he removed our sins from us. And our sins he will remember no more. So if you are a follower of Christ, man, I'm just inviting you to rekindle that relationship with him and praise the Lord with your soul again to close your eyes again in, in worship, go back to reading the Bible like you did before, come back to church like you used to do, and come back to a life group and rekindle that fire that you, have for, you had for the Lord at one moment. But if you don't, if you've never had a moment where you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to invite you. All these promises are available to you as well. All you have to do is be humble enough and admit that you need a savior, that you need God, and come to Jesus with that humility, and he will embrace you, he will adopt you, and then you're going to start being the recipient of these blessings. He will just dive into your pit, and he will remove you from the pit. Some pits are going to be removed overnight. Some pits are going to be a progression. He's going to embrace you. He's going to shower you with love and compassion. He is a God that he loves us that much. And his love is greater and taller than the stars. I beg you, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be the best thing, the best decision you've ever made into your life. And so let's bow our heads and let's pray. I want to pray a prayer of healing for anyone watching. So if there's anything physical, emotional, or even uh, uh, in your mind that needs healing, I want to pray about that as far as perspective and even mental health. And if anybody that, I want, I want to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for, uh, uh, for us that, that have a relationship with God, uh, but we, uh, you know, we just heard God re-inviting us to rekindle that relationship. And so let's close our eyes and let's pray. Uh, first, God, we want to uh, thank you for this message because uh, I need it, God. 
I needed to rekindle my relationship with you. I just didn't want to go through the motions anymore. Would you make my relationship with you fresh again and rekindle that same fire of the first love? Would you do that to my brothers and sisters watching? If anyone has a, a relationship with you that is a stale, would you make it fresh, God, in Jesus' name? Father God, I want to pray for healing now for anyone that is uh, struggling physically, emotionally, or even perspective, mental health-wise, or worldview. Father, I want to pray for healing, God, in bodies, hearts, and minds in the name of Jesus, Father. I, I, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you just touch people and do the supernatural that only you can do. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. And Father God, I want to pray for those that are for the first time committing their lives to you, Father. The Bible says there's celebration in heaven, God. So Father, would you receive, would you forgive and receive these new sons and daughters into your fold. And uh, thank you so much, God, for drawing us to you and opening our eyes. Help us, Father God, to not forget all of the blessings and make thanksgiving a lifestyle for us. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen. Hey, God bless you. Uh, have a great Sunday. I'll see you next week. God bless and goodbye.